A portion of this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More about them later. Okay, let's play a game of Guess the Panel Tag. One of these monitors has a mini LED backlight with 576 dimming zones, and two of these monitors are OLEDs. Actually, we have two different kinds of OLED here. One is a W OLED, and the other one is using a QD OLED panel. And for good measure, I've also thrown a VA panel with a conventional backlight into the mix. So, can you spot which one of these is which? Okay, the VA panel with the conventional backlight is probably pretty easy to spot. It's sample B. There's no question that the black level sticks out in a direct comparison. But the others? I have to say they all look pretty good. I'd be surprised if you could actually tell all of them apart. But the question really is if you were able to spot the mini LED among the two OLEDs. I mean, it's really common knowledge at this point that OLED is the undisputed king of contrast and black level, and there's no denying that the per pixel dimming of OLED technically is superior to the much larger dimming zones of mini LED. But I probably also don't have to tell you that OLEDs can burn in and degrade over time and also have a few other drawbacks and quirks. So if mini LED can manage to at least come close to OLED, that's a big win. So how much worse is mini LED in practice? Well, footage like this local dimming test make mini LED seem kinda bad to be honest. At least in a direct comparison to OLED, you can clearly see a bright halo surrounding the white bar on the mini LED panel. Reason behind that is the size of the local dimming zones. We only got 576 of them, which looks something a bit like this. So if we want to display this white bar, there are probably about 20 zones or so that need to be turned on to light up this shape. So the area that's going to be lit is much larger than the actual object, and we can see this as a light leak surrounding the pixels that we actually want to be lit. Of course, this is still much better than turning on the whole backlight. Yeah, it's really no comparison. Mini LED definitely is a great improvement over having a normal backlight, but with this monitor we still have 6400 pixels that are sharing a single dimming zone. So small shapes that only cover just a few pixels and are supposed to be bright at the same time are gonna be a huge problem. These city lights for example. An OLED panel really has no issues displaying super bright light spots against a completely black background, whereas on the mini LED the lights look a bit dull. And that's not because it lacks brightness. This mini LED monitor actually can get extremely bright, in fact much brighter than both OLED monitors. Like side by side you can really see how much brighter the mini LED monitor on the left really is. The monitor on the right is using a QD OLED panel which typically have a slightly higher full screen brightness than their W OLED counterparts, but it's still nowhere close to the brightness you can get from mini LED. And that's not only the case for full screen brightness, but it's true for smaller areas as well. Here we have the HDR brightness of the OLED monitors in blue and light blue, and the mini LED in orange. And the mini LED is consistently brighter than both OLEDs. Only towards super small window sizes, the OLEDs start to catch up. So high APL scenes like this one look much more impressive on the mini LED monitor thanks to its higher brightness. Kinda hard to convey that over camera, but this monitor can get so bright that it actually makes you squint your eyes. Which makes you wonder, why do these city lights then look so dark? Well, the mini LED backlight can get extremely bright, but it has to decide. Turning up the brightness of the backlight zones would make the city lights shine bright, but a single zone is so much larger than each of these lights, so it would also light up the black areas surrounding those lights, and we get tons of blooming as a consequence. So yeah, it's a balancing act, and in this case the monitor decides to dim down the lights quite a bit to prevent excessive blooming, sacrificing brightness in the process. Small light dots really are the hardest thing for mini LED, but with larger shapes this balancing act gets a whole lot easier. 576 zones can actually mimic this footage pretty well, like you can already kinda guess what's going on just by looking at these squares. Increasing the zone count would of course improve things a lot. And a few thousand zones already resemble the original footage pretty well. At some point we're probably gonna get mini LEDs with zone counts like this, or even higher, that approach per pixel dimming. But for now, this monitor with its 576 zones on a 27 inch display is a good representation of what you can get in today's market. And with more realistic video material, the image actually looks pretty good even next to OLED. And let's not forget that video material isn't always perfect. The media we consume usually is compressed pretty heavily, which 
is something you can learn more about in Brilliant's course about video compression. Yes, this is an ad read for Brilliant.org. How video compression works is part of a course that explains and shows the inner workings of everyday technology. Have you ever wondered why many YouTube videos show these blocky compression artifacts? Brilliant's courses use interactive graphics that make complex topics like video compression algorithms easy to understand. Or did you ever wonder how wireless communication like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth actually work? With Brilliant, you can learn all these things in a fun and interactive way, no matter if you want to learn a new skill or are just curious about how things work. The courses range from basic introductions to deeper explanations of complex topics. And they are adding new courses every month covering topics like math, data science and computer science, all in an interactive and visually pleasing way. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash techless or click the link in the video description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. Okay, this is a bit of a unique situation. Like how many people are gonna have an OLED display right next to their mini LED displaying exactly the same content. And with an OLED as a reference, it's pretty easy to cross-check if any blooming your spot is actually supposed to be in the footage or caused by the mini LED panel. Otherwise, that's not so easy to tell. It's really super common to have some amount of blooming baked into video footage, either caused by the camera lens, filters, or even by our own eyes. Yes, our own eyes are actually scattering light too. So when looking at the mini LED monitor in isolation, it's sometimes pretty hard to tell if the blooming is supposed to be there or not, unless of course you're looking at synthetic tests that are supposed to have no blooming at all. But yeah, when enjoying a good movie, the additional blooming of the mini LED tag often is masked by other effects and really is something you're only really gonna notice in very few scenes. However, this is very different on the desktop. Even those simple things like moving the mouse cursor over a dark mode website starts to feel like a local dimming stress test. And it's not just the mouse cursor. Typical everyday desktop tests are just full of high contrast shapes like text documents, buttons or icons, or even just dark mode text. It's really not a great experience as you're gonna see a lot of blooming all around. And it's super obvious that this is not supposed to be there. OLED, however, does a fantastic job with all these artificial high contrast shapes, as you would expect. So you might think that OLED would be perfect for productivity tasks, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Partially, that's because of burn-in. OLED monitors are still quite new to the market, so it's hard to say how much of an issue burn-in actually is for mixed usage, but it's pretty safe to say that staring like 8 hours a day at a white word document isn't something you should be doing on an OLED monitor. And it kind of feels like beating a dead horse at this point, but text really doesn't look great on OLED panels anyway. I'm just gonna link my in-depth comparison of W OLED and QD OLED in the video description in case you wanna know more about the color fringing issues that the two different kinds of OLED panels have. Mini LED displays generally don't have these issues as they're essentially just plain normal LCD panels, mostly IPS or VA, with a fancy mini LED backlight attached to it. So for regular desktop tests, you're just gonna turn the local dimming off, making this basically a plain normal LED LCD monitor with all its pros and cons. And the fact that mini LED monitors still rely on classic LCD panels also means that you gotta live with slow response times. Slow in comparison to OLED, that is. Here we have the response time charts of two mini LED monitors that are using a very similar mini LED backlight, if not actually the same, but the panels they're using are quite different and so are their response times characteristics. But average response times in the four to six milliseconds ballpark are about the best you can expect from a good mini LED monitor. OLED, however, is on a whole nother level. Less than one millisecond on average, which is crazy fast with a super strict testing methodology. And that's pretty consistent no matter if the monitor is using a W OLED panel like the one on the left or a QD OLED panel like the one on the right. So there's no question that OLED is the superior tech for gaming. A mini LED really can be a hit or miss depending on the panel that's being used in combination with the mini LED backlight and also depending on the overdrive tuning. Now, some people are afraid that the mini LED backlight might also add additional lag. Like, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense that the monitor has to decide which zones to light up by how much for each frame it has to display. And this might take a bit of additional processing time. In reality, though, these decisions can be made almost instantaneously. So the mini LED monitor we've been looking at in this video only takes an additional 0.2 milliseconds of processing when local dimming and HDR are turned on. 
funnily enough, the two OLED monitors have even slightly more processing lag. They're still slightly faster overall thanks to their higher refresh rate, and really all three monitors are super responsive. But anyway, bottom line is that the mini LED tech doesn't automatically come with a perceivable lag penalty. Some models might, but this monitor proves that it doesn't have to be the case. Now to circle back to the original question, how much worse is mini LED in practice then, all things considered? Well, if you expect mini LED to look just as good as OLED in each and every scenario, you're gonna be disappointed. OLED still is the benchmark for contrast and response times, and that's probably not gonna change anytime soon. No matter what you throw at it, there's basically no ghosting, no blooming, and just perfect blacks and contrast. Mini LED, however, is just less consistent and doesn't work equally well for every piece of content. With some footage, you will definitely notice the shortcomings of the mini LED tag. Especially on the desktop, local dimming really doesn't work well yet. But when we're talking about typical HDR movies or story-based games, mini LED can actually get you surprisingly close to the OLED experience. And for high brightness content, I'd even prefer the image on the mini LED monitor. It's also the slightly more affordable tag, likely to be more durable, and it's a bit more versatile. So even though OLED technically is superior, mini LED definitely has its place. I mean, OLED also isn't perfect. So for people who also want to use their monitor during the day for productivity tasks and basically everything that involves a lot of text, mini LED currently is the better option as you can just turn the local dimming off on the desktop. So yeah, I hope one day we'll get an actual no compromises display technology. No idea if that's gonna be new OLED panels that are much brighter burn-in resistant with no color fringing, or super fast mini LED displays with pixel-sized dimming zones, or maybe micro LED is ready until then, I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.